back, and it's a great pleasure, as always, to spend time with friends. And Jordan Maxwell has been a friend of mine and a friend of yours for, well, a long time. He's been investigating what really runs this planet, the symbolism, the mechanism, and all the rest of it for over 50 years. He's a remarkable human being in service to the good side of uh, what's left of this allegedly sentient species. And he's back with us tonight. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hi, hi there, Joe. Uh, yeah, it's it's really quite a story uh, how our civilization has slipped down to the lowest notch, and uh, we seem to be on a, a a downhill slide. Oh yeah, sliding to the bottom of the septic tank is where it's exactly. going. Exactly, precisely. And uh, <clears throat> most people, you know, don't care because as long as it doesn't affect them right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, who cares? Well, uh, eventually it's going to affect everybody on the Earth. Nobody's going to be left out. Well, just like the radiation from Fukushima, it's going to affect everybody on the planet. Everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. Every, everybody on the planet. And uh, so, I, I, you know, we've talked about this before, about how uh, I believe that the uh, the human race is being and has been brought into question now. I think the whole human experiment on the Earth because mm-hmm. I know we've had uh, ultimate terrible times in the in ancient history, and, the, <clears throat> and and awesome things have happened, I'm sure. On the but today uh, is different because whatever's going to happen today, the earth is filled with people, and uh, the the chaos would be absolutely horrible if, if things break down mm-hmm. now because people are not prepared for it. You know, in the early uh, thousands of years ago, uh, uh, people were more farmers and whatever would happen if they lived through it, well, they could rebuild their... Hey, 150 years ago in this country, 95% yeah. of Americans were agrarian. Yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, no matter what the situation, if they lived through it, well, they just get their farm going back again and, and get their yeah. life going back. But today, no, no, with high-rises and computers and all the technical stuff that we depend on just every day, if anything happens, I mean... <laughs> You know, I don't want to be around when that when that happens because people today are angry yeah. at each other to start with. Well, the and lies and the manipulation, the social engineering are so oh, yeah. over the top, and you know it, and many of you listening understand it very well. Nothing yeah. works the way you think it does, Jordan right. Maxwell. And that's you, that really is as profound as it gets, and it's 120% truth. Yeah. That, you know, when you think you walk into a bank and you're going to borrow money from <laughs> the bank, uh-huh. You don't borrow money from a bank. Banks don't loan money, uh, period. You know, they're not, they've never loaned money. As a matter of fact, uh, in the California Constitution, the 1849 Constitution expressly says in English that no banks are allowed to operate inside California state, period, mm-hmm. and that there will be no California state tax ever. In, the, in, the, in California state, there will be, never be a state tax Ever. That's mm-hmm. in the Constitution. Right. Well, today we got, uh, you know, we, we have something called a state, state uh, tax. It's not really. It's a, it's a, a federal tax on a federal citizenship. And that's a whole other story in itself. <laughs> so the point I'm making is that nothing is what you think it is. But, you know, we talked a little bit ago about this particular time uh, of, uh, of year, uh, being the spring and Easter, and uh, right. I thought it would be interesting for some people who have never heard where our celebrations come from. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. Because uh, because the Jewish celebration of the Passover is very, very big in the Jewish community, and almost all Jews, no matter what their political perspective, uh, you know, look, look to the Passover is very important. 0.2% of the world population, Jordan. Yeah. And here we are talking about the religious importance of 0.2% of the world population. That's not to demean them in any way. But we no, have no. population groups and ethnic groups that are a little bit bigger than 0.2% of the world population. Yeah, I know. I know, but it's uh, it's, it's dominant in, Christ- in the Christian countries, too, even yeah. Though, no, yeah. throughout the West. Yep. So, Go ahead, uh, please. Well, in order to understand Easter or and or Passover, because they're both the same thing, 
they both are a celebration of the spring, of the coming of new life in the spring. So it basically it boils down to sun worship. Uh, one of the ancient uh, pagan worships of the world is sun worship. Uh, let me explain. Uh, and the first week of summer, the first day of the first week of summer, the sun is as high over the northern hemisphere as it's going to go. Okay, it's not Hold, going any. It's not going any further. We'll go right through uh, the break, Jordan. Don't stop, please. Go okay. ahead. Now say that again. The first. Well, the first uh, the first uh, uh, week of summer, uh-huh. the, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere right. as it's going to go. Okay. It's not going any further north than the first day of summer. When is the first day of summer? Do we know? Well, it's on. It's on. It's what we call the summer solstice. So, so, solstice, yeah. Yeah, and so the first uh, first week of summer. Now, the sun is directly overhead. Now, I should throw in at this point and say that all of the teachings in Christianity, the entire uh, theology of Christianity, was developed in the northern hemisphere. Christianity has no teachings in it coming from the southern hemisphere. We don't have anything mm-hmm. of the aborigines of Australia or the uh, or the uh, tribes in in uh, Brazil or the Mayans and the Aztecs, etc. Uh, all the teachings of Christianity come from the northern hemisphere. That's important, because once you understand that, mm-hmm. you begin to look at the idea that the sun, as I said, is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to go on the first day of summer. June 21st. Now, yeah, which is, uh, we say, that, uh, and, the, and the sign, the, the zodiological sign that dominates uh, the summer is Leo, Leo the Lion. And so the sun is then referred to as being in the house of Leo the Lion. Uh, uh, and so Leo uh, is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. In Hebrew, it's the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is the sun in the constellation of Leo. Now, when he's in, uh, in summer, he's very hot. We say this guy's really hot. But now, 90 degrees later, and because the sun moves one degree each day southward, so 90 days later, or three months later, uh, it has moved 90 degrees southward. Now, he used to be hot in summer. Now he's not so hot. Now he's falling, so we call it fall. And now the sun is halfway down. It's going down, in, uh, so we call it fall. And now, 90 degrees later, or 90 days later, again, three months later, the sun reaches this lowest point in the southern sky. It is now down in South America, and our winter is here. And so the ancient people said that the sun was of little value to them now because the sun is dead as far as we're concerned. And if you think about how ancient man must have lived tens of thousands of years ago, it would be freezing cold up here, and, and, and there's not much sunlight. And so to them, the sun's dead. It's of no value. It's gone. However, uh, when it reaches the lowest point in the southern sky, which was on December 22nd, uh, it, go, it goes no further south than December 22nd. It stops. And for three days, the sun uh, rises on the same degree. Even the United States Navy uh, uh instruments can tell you that the sun comes up on the 22nd on the lowest uh, degree and then on the 23rd and 24th comes up on that same identical degree. So for three days the sun does not move off that one degree, uh, off the lowest degree. So we say that the sun is not moving for three days. So it's dead. So God's sun is dead. And of course the sun does belong to God. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. So it's God's sun. God's sun is the light of the world. Of course the sun is the light of the world. And so the sun reaches its lowest point, December 22nd, stays there for three days, dead for three days, then begins uh, at, on the December 25th, the sun moves one degree northward. And as I said, the Navy uh, can uh, see that on their instruments, that the sun actually moves one degree northward which means now it's going to begin its annual journey back to the northern hemisphere. Thank God, it's son, it's God's son is reborn. He's born again. 
and he promised he would return, so here it is, he's returning. He's now beginning his annual journey, coming back to the Northern Hemisphere. So 90 degrees or 90 days later, he is finally what was dead in winter, he is now springing back to life for us. So we call it, we call that time when he's springing back to life, spring. And so when the when the sun passes over the equator, officially over the equator, uh, the ancient people said, and we need to throw this in, but the ancient people said that when you died, they used the word past. We still say that, like grandmother passed last night, or grandfather mm-hmm. passed away last mm-hmm. night, mm-hmm. or passed on. It's always past, meaning they're gone. And so when the sun was dead in winter, reborn on December 25th, that's why we celebrate God's son's birthday on December 25th, because it moved one degree. Now it's coming back over the equator. And as it comes over the equator, they celebrate it in, uh, in Egypt and around the world, the coming of the sun back to the northern hemisphere. Why? Because it's spring. He has passed over the uh, equator. So on the first uh, first week of spring, they call that the Passover, because the sun has passed over the uh, the. Uh, what am I trying to say? The sun has passed over the equator. So this is where we get the idea of the Passover. So basically, what we're saying is that the Jewish religion is uh, honoring the sun now, who's coming back. He's going to be springing back to life. Mm-hmm. And, of course, spring is uh, associated with the uh, constellation of uh, Virgo. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, God's son is born of a virgin. Of course, Virgo the virgin, the constellation of Virgo. Um, And so, uh, eventually, 90 degrees, 90 days later, he's back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so, once you understand that uh, that, that the story in the Old and the New Testament, especially the New Testament, is an astronomical story about the the, the sun and its tw- and its travels through uh, life and death, and he's come back and bringing life back to you know bringing life back to the northern hemisphere. And of course, we you know the ancient people said that the sun was pure energy, and energy is life. Without energy, there is no life. Life is energy, and the sun is pure energy. So therefore, if the sun were not to shine, but kept his energy for himself, he would last probably forever. But the sun is very uh, generous, so it's going to spread its energy around the solar system to warm the planet, and especially to us. And so the sun is giving rays to the uh, to the earth so that food can grow, and we can grow, and we can have life. And so therefore he is giving his life that you might live. But God's Son has given his life so that you might live. Of course, the Son's giving us energy so you can live. And so when you start breaking down the ancient story of astrotheology, you begin to see that both Judaism and Christianity are actually astronomical religions. Uh, And when we get into Judaism, of course, I was going to say also that uh, the Passover, as I said, was the Son passing over the equator. But we can't have Christians worshiping the sun in the Passover because that's Jewish. So the Christians say instead uh, that God's son is resurrected. That that sounds better. So he's resurrected and come back to life. And so, Much more dramatic, I agree. Well, yeah, it sounds better. It's just a whole lot better than just Passover. And so the Christians go out on in the first week of spring and to celebrate God's sun passing over the equator and so what do they do? They have a Easter sunrise service where the Christians go out and actually wait for the sun to rise. And somehow or another they are able to to um, you know to completely misunderstand what they're doing. Standing out there five o'clock in the morning watching the sun come up, that's sun worship. And uh, so they're watching the sun come over the equator, or passing over. Uh, then when you get into the Jewish religion, understanding that, uh, at, you know, uh, we've heard so many times that the, the early Jewish religion or the Hebrew religion, the ancient Hebrew religion, first of all, I am of the opinion, now I've only been looking at this for 50 years, but I'm of the opinion that there is, in fact, never was a ancient 
Hebrew religion. I do not believe for at all that there was an ancient Israel. I believe that Judaism was most likely developed in the A.D. I do not believe Judaism was a B.C. religion. I think uh, Judaism probably was developed somewhere around the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th century A.D. 